Okay, now teams should be able to hear the audio. audio. Okay, cool. Hi. Yeah, my name is Arpad, and basically the point of this presentation is to sell you on Vim. Uh, if by the end of this uh, quick talk you are hungry to learn a bit more and want to try it out um, on your own, then that's a success in my book. Um, I'm going to blast through a couple of features I'm going to introduce you to, tell you what Vim is all about, and hopefully by the end you'll become a part of the Vim community. But you will not learn Vim here. Uh, I only have 20 minutes after all. So, largely, I just want you to relax and have some fun, and um, hopefully you gain something from this. And I'll also have a set of resources and general advice at the end for how to get started on your journey, because I know it can be kind of scary at the start. Um, but I promise you, it's really not. So, you might not really know what Vim is, and that's completely fine. You don't really have to have a background knowledge. I'll give you a sort of cold... Uh, dead face definition um, so that you can kind of grasp what's going on. So Vim, I mean, it's a program where you press keys on the keyboard and you get to edit text files. Um, it's usually used in the terminal and it's super old. Its, uh, its parent program came out in 1976, which is a little bit ago. And if I want to sell you on using Vim, these are kind of bad... This is kind of a bad starting point. I mean, you probably already have a way to edit text files. You probably don't want to use a terminal, right? And if you do, then I don't really need to sell you on Vim. You're probably using it anyhow. And you don't want to learn anything that's super old. You want to learn cool new stuff, and I understand that. So instead, I'm going to tell you what Vim really is. I'm going to flip these three around and tell you why they're actually good things. So what's Vim really? Well, it's not a text editor. It's a common language, right? It's more like a lingua franca of of talking to computers. Um, it is a faster way to tell the computer what you want it to do. Um, and that's very useful. So actually, it's sneakily in a lot of different programs that you might be using. So here's here's a list. Reddit, Google Drive, Facebook, DuckDuckGo, GitHub, Bash, 9 Twitter, and Tumblr. Basically, everyone has a little bit of Vim hidden away in their website or program or, or whatever. Just because some ideas are just so obviously good that you have to put them everywhere. Um, right. So Vim doesn't actually just live in the terminal either. It lives anywhere that you want to use it. And well, we might think through why that is. I mean, basically, software engineer type people really like Vim, right? Computer scientists and software engineers. Um, which means probably someone out there has written you an excellent Vim emulation mode for whatever editor you're comfortable with. Right? Someone out there has gone in and put in the legwork leg to make it so that you can use um, Vim for whatever you need to use at work or whatever Java IDE you have to use. Right? So here's another big list. There you go. There's Visual Studio Code and Full Fat Visual Studio, all of the IntelliJ um, platforms, Xcode, everything has has a good Vim emulation with everything that I've touched so far. Um, and what does that actually mean for you? Well, what it means is you don't have to use Vim in the terminal to benefit from it. You can just use it wherever. It'll it'll come with you. It's a skill that's transferable, whatever you're going to be doing. Um, and yeah, you don't have to use the terminal to, to use Vim at all. Um, but yeah, well, you know. And it's not just, it's not old, it's a standard. It's one of those ideas that have stuck around for so long. And those ideas are very rare, you know, and especially in computing. Um, it's a rare idea that sticks around for 50 years. So you should probably pay attention to ideas like that because they tend to be really good ones. And also, because it's been uh, around that long, it's also everywhere. So every server that you'll ever touch probably has Vim pre-installed. So it's just a useful skill to have to be able to touch any server and talk to it, even if you don't know anything about it, because you know Vim. And also, um, learning Vim, tinkering with it, and getting it just how you like it will teach you a lot about how your computer actually works. Um, so it's worthwhile in different ways. So Vim is more like what? It's more like a tried and true language for talking to a computer. So let me show you. Um, I actually have something special, well, you know, something kind of special prepared for you guys. Um, I have sort of a, a CRT style terminal 
because I, I think part of the appeal of Vim is like, you know, that retro-ish aesthetic. So we're going to dig deep into that now. Um, so if you scroll down here, can you see? OK, lovely. So we're going to be doing a little bit of a challenge. This is a CRT terminal emulator, but don't worry too much about it. It's just eye candy. Um, so right now, um, we are in my university directory. And you can see that you know I have all my modules that I've taken in the first year um, listed out here. So you know CS118 programming and info and both maths modules, things like this, all the way to functional programming and some year two stuff that no one cares about. And say I wanted to help some first years out or some second years out as well. And I wanted to collect all of the resources that I used last year and put them on a website, right? So that I could just put it up somewhere and anyone who didn't want to look for all the exercise sheets and seminar questions and seminar answers and things like this um, could just go on this website, click on the link and use it themselves. Um, that's kind of the demo. That's kind of the challenge we'll be working on today. Um, so for those of you, you know, playing along at home, you can go ahead and have a shot at this. But if you want to do this, we first kind of have to find all the PDFs or documents that we want to link to. Um, so you can go ahead and have a shot and writing your own little command, but that's not really the point of the presentation. So we'll just use something like this, which will, just like it says, find everything that is a PDF. And we'll be putting it into a HTML file that we'll be working on. Right, so that runs through, uh, goes through all this directory, and uh, puts in all of the um, all of the links that I used, all the PDFs that I used last year. So we'll open it up in Vim and we'll start working on it. So welcome to Vim. Uh, I've I have a much prettier Vim configuration than this, but I thought I would use just standard clean Vim for this presentation for you guys. So as you can see, this file is literally just a list of PDFs uh, starting out at the top here with um, CS141's labs, moving on to things like the coursework uh, specifications. And then at the bottom uh, here, we can see it's all math stuff and notes and things like this. But what you can also notice is in the bottom right hand ish corner, it says the number 242. So what that means is there are 250 more or less PDFs that we want to work on. Keep that in mind because we'll we'll get back to that in a little bit. First, let me show you what we actually want to do, because some of you might not have worked that much with HTML. So I'll show you on this first line what I want this first line to turn into. So since I want this file to be something that you open up in your browser and you see a list of links that you can click on, what we can do in uh, HTML is use the A tag for that, something that looks a little bit like this. And I want to fill it out with the information from this file, right? I don't want this dot at the start. I want just the URL to be this, right? So if I select that, I'll put it in here, and then what should I name this? Like what should show up on the actual um, site? It should be something, maybe just the end of the file, because you know if you're just looking at this, you don't really care what folder I decided to put it in. So I want to apply this same formatting, the same um, logic to all of this 250 PDFs that we have here in this entire file. And I guess I kind of just want to think through, how might you do this in VS Code or something like this? Um, if you were going to just copy and paste with your mouse, um, I guess we could work through it. Um, you know, we could try this. So we say, okay, I need to, I need to copy and paste the previous one, right, and put it here. And then I need to select with the mouse all of the file path and then replace the previous one. And then I also need to copy and paste the file name. And then finally, I'd need to copy the link again for the next one because I've copied something else, right? So let's do some napkin math and see how long that might take. And just like any rational human being, we'll use Python as our calculator. Um, so there's about 250 PDFs, right? Something like that. And we have to do three mouse and keyboard copy and pastes plus one, I suppose. So something like seven seconds each, maybe, if you're not really speed running. Um, so how many minutes would that be? Well, let's find out. It's something like 30 minutes. 
Um, if you're not very rapid anyhow, it'll take about 30 minutes of just going through in VS Code, copy and pasting. Whew. Well, I'm not sure if I want to do that. And just by the tone of my voice, you might be able to tell that there's a smarter way to do this. I suppose you could write a program to do it, but that would kind of be a pain. Regardless, let's see what we could actually do. So if I clean up this file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press um, QQ on the keyboard. And in the bottom left, you can see that it says recording Q. You know, don't worry too much about what that means. Although, you know, you guys are smart. You might be able to do some inference in your brain and figure out what it might correspond to. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this line that we're on, turn it into a link in a dumb way, like just the way that I kind of would do it normally. So I would open up a, a tag like this, and then I'd say, OK, I want everything but the dot and the slash. So I'd select it and copy it back in, right? OK, and then I would end that tag. OK, so what do I want the file name to be? Well, I want it to be just this end bit, right? And if I open this, paste it in. Ooh, I also want to align it so I can do that and delete this line because I've already done it, right? So if I delete this line, I think we're done. So if I press Q, the recording will go away. And well, what would we have accomplished? Well, let me show you. If I press Q now and have my cursor on this line, as you can see, it'll automatically apply the same logic that we wanted to that as well. So let me show you again. We're on this line with lab recursive types. If I press Q now, it will automatically apply the same thing, even though the file might be completely different. So you might be thinking, well, can I just repeat that for the whole file? So we have you know, 252 lines to go and 16. Uh, what's 252 minus 16? 236. So if I press 236 at Q, it's going to run through the file for me and apply the same logic that we went and did manually. Ooh, I was off by one, actually. But it will apply the same logic, um, the same exact uh, maneuvers that we did with the first one to everything. And guess what? All 726 lines of links is now done in no time. No time at all compared to 30 minutes. And we can just save this file, and boom, there it is. We just have it available. I could put it up right now, and it would be lovely. So with the demo over and having gone successfully, which is rare, um, let's get back to this. So yes, demo time, demo over, Woo! huge success. So how did that work? Well, it's kind of because Vim is a language, like we talked about, where you just press keys on the keyboard and don't do anything else. So let's dig into that. Vim is a language. But what are the parts of that language? I mean, languages have parts, right? English is kind of about nouns and verbs and adverbs and adjectives and all that stuff. But mainly, it's about nouns and verbs. It's about actions and it's about things, right? The Vim language is the exact same way. It has nouns and it has verbs. So maybe let's look at a couple of them. So here's sort of a quick table of nouns. If you if you press W on the keyboard, Vim will interpret that as you say talking about a word or jumping over a word. If you press AS on the keyboard, Keyboard that'll Vim will read that as oh you're talking about a sentence now, and we can combine that with some verbs like D for delete and C for change. So let's see, can we put these together like mash them together to make a sentence? Well, yeah, we could just say something like change a paragraph in English. Well, to say that in Vim would be C A P, no cap. Right, but can we take it a bit further? You know, in English we can we can take this further. We can say I can change a word. But I can also just make it multiple. I can say change three words. Can I do that in Vim? Well, yes, it's the exact same thing. Instead of saying C A W for one word, change one word, you say C three W, just in the same way you would do in English. And you know, you don't only work with, especially computer scientists people, you don't only work with paragraphs and sentences, you work with more complicated things. And there are nouns for all of those things too, like IB for inside brackets, if you're working with, uh, you know, trying to change what a function takes or things like that. Or you could say something like CIT to change the contents of an HTML tag. I mean, maybe I could even show you if I didn't close it. Um, I did close it, unfortunate. It's fine. Um, I could say CIT, so 
yeah, sorry, it's, you could say CIB to say change inside brackets and uh, change the contents of this HTML tag with CIT. Um, and as I'm talking, this kind of sounds like I'm pouring a lot of stuff into your brain. And it would be hard to memorize all this stuff so you could actually use it, but that's really not the case. It's, it's really not a thing of memorization. And why is that? Well, it's because Vim is a simple language, and you as a human being have a great capacity for language. And Vim is a very simple one. It's just this structure that we talked about here, verb, count, and noun, but always. Um, and also, it's not really memorization if the keys to do everything are just what you would expect them to be, like I to insert, C to change, AP for a paragraph. Um, it just becomes muscle memory the more that you use it. And by more, I mean after 15 minutes. So if you wanted to learn, how would you do it? Well, generally, I would say, watch some videos first. The reason I say that is because it's very easy to go off on the wrong road. Um, then kind of expects you to know what you're doing when you open it up. Um, so you might open it up and not be, not have the first clue of what to do. Um, watching a couple of tutorials and things like that will help guide you a little bit so you don't get stuck. Then, just like someone's just talking in a chat, exactly, go on the terminal and type VimTutor. Every, if you have 15 minutes available, 20 minutes where you're free throughout the day, just open up VimTutor and go through it. VimTutor is basically a, exactly what it sounds like. You go in and it teaches you concepts about Vim by you actually using it. And by the end of those couple days, you'll have a grasp of the basics enough to, I don't know, do your Java coursework or homework or whatever in Vim or your Python scripts or whatever you'd like to get up to on a computer. After those couple of days, you'll be able to do it in Vim, at least to a beginner level. So where should you go? Well, here's a couple of resources. VimTutor, like we talked about. VimTutor, actually do VimTutor. Um, and watch this guy's tutorials. Um, I, I didn't know if I should recommend this guy specifically. He's not usually who you would recommend if you, to people just learning Vim, but this guy, the Primogen on YouTube, he's quite eccentric, which is why I was sort of hesitant to recommend him, but he's also fun. So go ahead and watch this guy's tutorials to give you a bit of a guide and don't just watch them go into VimTutor and actually do them. If you watch this guy's tutorials all the way through, like eating snacks on your bed, you will not have learned them. That's just the case. And then some advice on the side. Set your key repeats super high. Like if you're on Windows, get off Windows, but also open up the open up the little mouse settings thing and drag that, not keyboard setting thing, sorry, and drag that thing all the way to the right. And take your hands off the mouse, take your hands off the arrow keys. Let Vim guide you a little bit. Right. And also, you can learn Vim in three days, but you cannot learn it in less than three days. So if by the end of the first two days you aren't done, then don't get angry at yourself. It's completely fine. It'll take three days. Okay, finally. Right now you might be thinking, this like sounds pretty cool, and like it kind of you've kind of convinced me that it's useful, but it also looks like super hard with a massive learning curve. I just don't have the time for that. Like maybe I'm a freshman or a second year. It's like, okay, I have university. I want to socialize, I want to go out and drink. Um, I want to um, participate in societies. Maybe I'm an exec at one of the societies or something like that. I also want to go to the gym. I also want to exercise outside of the gym. I want to um, kind of participate in the community. And also I need to apply for CVs. That's like 10 things that you have to be doing, okay? Um, you can't really add the 11th thing to be Vim. Um, but I promise you that's wrong. It's the opposite, really. Um, you don't have the time not to learn Vim. It'll save you so much time in the long run that you have to do it. Um, so yeah, don't let that mentality strike you. So thank you for listening. If you enjoyed it, you know, add me on Discord and like, you know, send me a nice message or whatever. Um, and if you do get started, please do badger me, uh, especially if you need any advice or, or setting things up, anything like that hit me up and I'm here. Um, also, I, I just enjoy getting emails. So if you want to email me, I would like read the email and then I will reply in an email and it'll be so crazy. So just do that. That seems like it'd be fun. So yeah, 